And this can oh, a lot of people know you obviously as Leslie Chow, but we got this new role. Before we get into that, it's your birthday. Oh yeah, happy birthday. you joined the happy show happy on your birthday. No, it's just uh, treating myself. This is my birthday, my birthday <laughs> wish is to be on first take. So right? Who's it. better than you? You thank get to you. be with these two. No, no, thank you. It's I, I really appreciate you guys having me again. So thank you. So tell us about this new show, Doctor Ken. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's loosely based on my life. I used to be a doctor at an HMO here in here in uh, California, and also based on my family life. I a wife and two kids and it's it's um, really beyond a dream come true I mean this is the kind of the happiest I've ever been in it, you know in terms of the situation I, I can't believe that uh, and so grateful that you know ABC is allowed me to have a series much less I mean I was happy with the pilot so my expectations Amazing. have always been very realistic so and, I, and the movie knocked up <laughs> Okay, <laughs> movie knocked up. Now, now, why are we going back to that? Because I'm getting ready to tell you why. Stay with me. Okay. You were quite mean as a doctor right. in that movie. Now, this, now, I mean, you you were hilarious there. Right. Do you have any of those moments in the show? Oh yeah, they're, it's it's they're really? definitely inspired by Dr. Cooney and Knocked Up. They're definitely, okay. I think that's a prototype. Uh, you know, I think a little bit of a little bit of skip, maybe like a little oh, bit. Oh, of, oh, a little, little bit. Of skip. Yes. That's, that's a kind of a workshop. Yes, hey, it's a compliment. Yeah, thank you. Just kind of workshop. Just channel your inner skip. Just channeling your inner skip. Mm -hmm. So I think you know this is very. I'm really here to shadow you as opposed to really be a guest. You've I'm, got to yeah. be kidding me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Skip Bayless on ABC? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Could be, maybe the spinoff is Dr. Skip. Who okay. knows? So. Allow me to congratulate you on your birthday oh, for an you, amazing career arc going from doctor to stand-up comic along the way to all of a sudden all those movies and you have your own series on ABC well deserved. for which you write because you are a doctor. Thank you yeah. so much. Way I really I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Not a not a talented family or anything. Gee, <laughs> do it all. Right. Okay, let's talk some sports because okay. you're good at this. You are a huge NBA fan, and I think you've swung now your allegiance here in L.A. to Clippers more than Lakers, right? <laughs> um, I, I, I do love the Clippers. I do love me some Clippers. Yes. I think you heard our takes to yes, start this show on DeAndre Jordan. Mm -hmm. Your take, please. Um, with all due respect, I, I, I disagree with your assessment of the situation. I do think that... I do think I'm that... I'm going to get mean on you. I, that's fine. And, 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 uh, I'll, I got your back. I'll He's take it on it. camera, and then... Don't worry okay, about cool, him. cool, cool. So, no tears today. Um, it's my birthday. And <laughs> you I, can cry if you want. I to. will cry. I will cry if if need be. But I, I do think I think DeAndre made the right decision, you know, ultimately to go to the Clippers. And and I'll tell you why. But I think, you know, the Mavs had the better pitch. Clippers had the better roster. It doesn't matter what the pitch is. That's you fair. look at the roster. And you're also talking about a twenty six year old man making decisions that someone in my forties I mean, I mean I'm also I'm twenty three, but someone in my forties. <laughs> we all are. Yeah. So when it, like I'm in my forties and making those I can't make decisions that well. So it, it to me it was obvious it was a bit of an emotional journey that he had with the Mavs and a bit of emotional decision. Uh, my manager has always told me never make decisions in business based on emotion. That's kind of what happened. But you had the moratorium, completely legal, and you know he changed his mind and he went to the Clippers. Yes, it's gonna, he's going to take a hit in popularity. Sure. He's going to take a hit with with some street cred. But at the end of the day, as ugly as this journey was, he made well, the right basketball decision. I, I don't, I don't think there's any question that he made the right basketball decision. But I'm wondering, you're 26 years old. It's not like you're a boy. You can pick up the phone and call the owner and tell him after you agree to take his money that you changed his mind, right? What if his people said, or maybe his agent said, "Don't call anybody." That's common in business. Mm -hmm. Don't like. What if he wanted to call Mark Cuban and he's like, "Don't call anyone until this is all blows well, away." Well, here's the problem: the agent in question is a guy by the name of Dan Fagan who's considered to be very, very tight with Mark Cuban. Mm -hmm. And when DeAndre Jordan was in his house and he had changed his mind, his agent wasn't even, he couldn't even, his agent couldn't even get in the house. So uh, clearly the agent wasn't telling, he wasn't listening to his agent because if he was listening to his agent, chances are he would not only call Mark Cuban, but probably would have taken the deal after agreeing to take the deal because DeAndre changing his mind not only makes him look bad, it makes his agent look bad. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they weren't on the same page, but uh, I'll playing devil's advocate. What if, you know, what if, what if Fagan had, and I read about that, what if Fagan like led into that path? And sometimes when you're, when your talent and your agent tells you to do this, you're I'm, I'm like, you know, off camera, I'm pretty shy and pretty polite. And I'll be like, okay, okay, okay. And then, and then you're telling you to, to go do this movie as opposed to this other movie. Oh, this is great. Oh, cool, cool. And then you, if you're a people pleaser at heart, and I've met DeAndre several times. He is a lovely guy. I love him. He's, He's a very a, nice Nice guy. Very nice guy, and I think it's. I think you're put in a very hard situation. You know, yes, it could be, it could be, you know, it could be blame could be put both ways. But also, when you're having an agent that's steering you, allegedly steering you towards the maps, you know, sometimes you're in, you're in a bit of a pickle, and, and it gets ugly. Barricade him out of the house. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's look. It was <laughs> it was an ugly situation. At the end of the day, I think uh, he made the right basketball decision. When the Clippers, when they're winning, it's going to be people forget. I think you have fallen into the trap of you, you've gotten to know him, and I do think he can come across as a very nice guy, a fun guy to be around, as you've often said. He's great with the media, but again, from a basketball perspective, he's the kind of guy I wouldn't want on my team. I wouldn't want in my NBA foxhole, so to speak. disagree, Dave. Okay? I just don't think he has the highest basketball character, but I agree with you. He's a perfect fit as a third wheel behind Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, with Doc Rivers as his coach. He's a much better fit with your Clippers, which is why they're back in contention, than he would have been as the man in Dallas. I think he would have crumbled under that kind of pressure to live up to that contract in that town. I think in business, I think GMs and coaches make decisions like this all the time. No one knows about because let's say they're not in the spotlight. So mm -hmm. if they're flipping their decisions, you know, right, right on telling a player, we're not going to trade you. And then they trade you. That happens all the time. I feel like this is a behind the scene thing that you just, you just, you just saw the underneath the rug, underneath the carpet. And it's just laid out for everyone to see. And it, it, the Clippers didn't do themselves any favor by emojiing and documenting yeah, all that. Emojiing. So, but I, I think, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yes, sir. It's all nice, good, and dandy. You're sitting here. We love having you on the show. You're a Clippers fan. You waffle back and forth. You know, <laughs> you're fair weather. I get all of it. I get all of it. The weather is but, fair but, in LA. Hey, 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 yo, it's better than fair. Uh -huh. But let me be very, let me, let me throw this at you. <laughs> there, those few days when it was announced that he was going to Dallas and he was leaving the Los Angeles Clippers, how are you feeling about the Clippers at that particular moment as you pondered life with DeAndre <laughs> Jordan? And it was just CP3, Blake Griffin, and Doc Rivers having lost out on DeAndre Jordan with no cap space to mm -hmm. literally go out there and correct losing such an uh, impactful player. What? Where was your mentality then? Sir? <laughs> I would like to know. Well, my biggest regret. Yes, I did. Did I buy math season tickets too fast? Yes, I oh. did. Oh. Did I? Did I, do I regret <laughs> that? Yes, I do. But having said that, <laughs> neither team had a plan B, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they didn't get DeAndre, they didn't know where they're going to go. The Clippers, they didn't know where they were going to go. Mm -hmm. So it was. It's one of those things. It's a shame someone had to lose out on that because neither team, in my opinion, had a plan B. So yes, okay. the Clippers would have been, yeah, dealt a major blow. And I was thinking, I was in the writer's room and Dr. Ken, when one of the writers told me, they saying, like, DeAndre went to the Mavs. I'm like, what? You I wrote was... him out of the show right then? <laughs> you were like, he's out. Said, no, cameo no cameo. No cameo. No cameo, for, cameo him. for him. No cameo for him. You know, maybe I'll call Cuban and maybe to have him invite me <laughs> yeah. to a cameo. There you go. But, I did. <laughs> but no, I, I think that, look, it's, it, it's, it's ugly right now, but winning will cure all ills. Mm -hmm. And it will, and and, and, and the Clippers are now back in contention and, you know, at least to the Western Conference Finals. I'm going to put you on a good spot here. <laughs> your, your most famous or maybe infamous character that you've ever played was the hangover character, yes. Leslie Chow. Yes. yes. So do us a favor. You're great as Leslie Chow. Assume character here. Go into character. Okay. And, and try to coach LeBron and company, if you would. How would you coach them oh. as Leslie Chow? Okay, like in the finals, like the sure. NBA finals? Sure, yeah. Like, LeBron, you're doing too many ISOs. <laughs> too many ISOs, <laughs> stupid. Trust Black. Trust Black. Even though he's funny, it's funny because he's black. <laughs> so uh, now we will have to rebuild, but be smart. smart. Be smart. I like it. Don't hire Tristan for 90 million. No, you could get him for much cheaper. Much cheaper. And yeah, he fat. I didn't say that. That was, was Chow. <laughs> that was Chow. Yeah, it was Chow because you're telling him to trust black. Trust black. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. That's what Chow's saying. Ken yeah. Jung is not necessarily yeah. saying that. There we go. But I'm also saying not to trust Chow. I'm fair weather, as you know. This yes. is L.A. That's right. We just want to be loved. How okay. y'all feeling about? How you feeling about? The, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. I, I got one last area here. Yes, you're a Duke undergrad. You went to UNC, obviously, yep. med school. But the shock of the night, the first shock anyway, on draft night was Jaleel Okafor of your Duke University yeah. did not go to the Lakers. Should have went. He should have went to I the agree. Lakers. I mean, I think he he's the he's the new big fundamental. I mean, I think Towns is amazing. He's a genius, and he deserves to go first. But I, I you know, I you, you don't pass up on Okafor. He did well. The 76ers played the Lakers in the summer league over the weekend. Jalil did very well. I mean, Russell is great, and I think they, you know, he is so talented. Is it a Duke thing? Is it? A I think what there is a there is a stat where like. Duke teams that have won championships, their top players have been number three in the draft. And it's almost like, th th there's almost like a, a stigma sometimes when, and this happened to Dean Smith in Carolina back in the day, when, when the top players of their programs, they would get drafted, they would assume that they're drafted high or they're, they're assuming that they're superstars in, because of the system. But I, I don't think that. I mean, Okafor, he was just a freshman. He is a superstar, and the Lakers should have taken him. I, I mean, so agree, and yeah. I think you agree. Of course I do. I, I, listen. Here's why no one had a problem with D'Angelo D'Angelo Russell being taken number two overall. You assumed that the Lakers had a deal in place for a big man if they were going to take the point guard number two. Because it was LaMarcus Aldridge, it was Marcus Gasol, it was DeAndre Jordan, even though I knew he wasn't going to leave the Clippers mm -hmm. to stay in town and play yep. for the Lakers. I mean, you saw all even of these Greg different Monroe. Tyson Chandler mm -hmm. to a lesser degree who ended up going to Phoenix. And Phoenix did well in free agency as well. You just look at it from that perspective and you were just of the mindset. They must have a big de a, a deal in place for a big man. And when that didn't reach fruition in free agency, now you're looking at D'Angelo Russell, even though they rave about him. Point guard, they say he's three steps ahead of everybody. He sees the floor exceptionally well. He's going to be special. But you do find yourself looking at them and said, you passed up on a dude that's going to give you 20 and 10 a night. By the way, he might be three mental steps, but not three physical steps ahead of everybody. Right. I don't think he's an explosive athlete. Well, they, 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 they talk about him as a point guard. They say he's, you know, they say he passes it to where you should be, right, not to you. They, they say he knows what he's doing, and he's uh, just a quintessential floor general. They say he's going to be special. We'll see. But you don't teach the size mm -hmm. and offensive ability that Jaleel Okafor has, and they passed up on him. I don't understand that. Seven turnovers over the weekend, Russell had. He did. Ken. Good stat. This guy knows his sports. <laughs> he's research. He's research, too. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Dr. Ken on ABC. Yes or no? Clippers get out of the second round? Oh, yeah. Cl uh, Clippers get out of the second round. That's emotion talking. All right. <laughs> they do. Talking. Happy birthday. Hope Thank you have you. a great, have great rest so of the day. All right. Moving on. We move from the association to the NFL. More serious subject here. Greg Hardy got his suspension reduced from 10 to 4 games, but the fight may not be over. The guys will react to that after the break. Keep it locked.